in our report. Hallelujah. Familiar scriptures this morning. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. then say to these things if God be for us who can be against us he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect it is God that justified who is he that Condemneth, it is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we surrender ourselves to you to be used of you this morning. We just ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Glory to God. We pray for the threefold anointing this morning, Lord. The kingly anointing, the priestly anointing, and the prophet anointing, Lord. Glory to God. To be in this house of worship this morning. Hallelujah. And we welcome you, Lord. Glory to God. We encourage you, Lord, to have your way in our service. Let your hand be upon each and every one of us, Lord, and on every year that hear it this morning that they can receive from heaven every spirit. Glory to God. Open it up, Lord, that they can receive from heaven. As follows, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. Glory to God, for we know, Lord, that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your Spirit, Lord of hosts. And we give you praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the church can say amen if you want to. Amen. 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 I didn't title this message. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? But I've hallowed it, don't let nothing or anything change your heart this morning. Amen. If your heart is right with Christ, don't let anything mess with that this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because David said in Psalm 57 verse 7, my heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. And he goes on to say in, in chapter 108, verse 1 again, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. My tongue. Even with my glory. Hallelujah. Will I give praise? But verse 35 of chapter 8 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? What is Paul telling us here in these scriptures? Paul's given us something here in these scriptures. He said, it's not who shall keep Christ from loving us, but who or what will keep us from loving Christ. Amen. You see, because there's nothing that can keep Jesus from loving you. Amen. All those sins that you committed don't keep him from loving you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he has that divine love. So nothing that we can do will cause him to stop loving us. Amen. But Paul's trying to tell us here what can keep us from loving, from loving Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so it's not who shall keep Christ from loving us, but who or what shall keep us from loving Him. Since this is the true idea for the things listed here are of, might affect people, but not Christ. If we will not permit them, now listen to this, if we will not permit them to affect our love for Christ, then we are safe from all danger of backsliding. I know people don't like to hear that word backsliding. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on for but if we will walk in Christ, if we will walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, come on. Come on. because if we walk in the flesh, then we will fulfill the lust of the what? The flesh. Amen. 
But if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One who lives and walks in the Spirit will not separate, will not be separated by any of the 17 things listed in these scriptures. In verse 35 through 39, there are seven things that, that Paul is talking about here that can keep us from loving Christ. But it does not keep Christ from loving us. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? What did we mention here not too long ago, not too many services ago? Tribulation ranks what? Patience. Patience. So we need tribulation to take us into things and bring us through things to increase our faith and to give us patience. Hallelujah. Because whenever you go through tribulation, it shouldn't separate you or cause you to stop loving Christ. That should cause you to seek Him more. Amen. And the more that I seek Him, the more that I find that I love Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The more that I fall before Him on my face and begin to weep and cry before God and begin to seek Him, the more I find that I need Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tribulation will definitely not keep me from loving Christ. Distress, same thing. Or persecution. Anybody in here been persecuted? Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Jesus promised us persecution. Amen. Yes, it Hallelujah. Because he was persecuted, so will we be cursed. If we stand for him and believe in him and walk with him and stand for him, then we also will be persecuted. Glory to Amen. God. Will famine? or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This kind of goes along with Rob Smith's Wednesday night. Praise God anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah. When all these things, you find these things coming to pass in your life, begin to seek God and praise God anyway because none of these things can hinder us or stop us from loving Christ if we'll get ourselves wrapped up in Jesus uh, and get our minds and Amen. hearts totally fixed upon Him. Glory to God. David said, my heart is fixed. That means it can't be changed, church. Amen. <clears throat> Once we get our hearts fixed, I preached a message one time about heart trouble. That's what gives us trouble with Christ is our heart. Amen. It's not fixed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't mean it's mechanically broken. I mean it's spiritually broken. It's not fixed. Glory to God. Some of us may still be walking around with that old heart of stone. Maybe that heart's not been changed yet. Maybe the Lord has not taken that heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Well, why would He give us a heart of flesh? Something that hurts. Something that He can deal with. Something that He can convict. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And He goes on in verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither before it went part For I am persuaded You're looking at a man that once was passionate on God. I let something that somebody else told me, and I can't really blame it on them, but this is what the enemy used to convince me, to persuade me. Okay? Paul said, I am persuaded that none of these things can cause me to stop loving Christ. So this man that used to be a backslider, he become persuaded by something someone said, and the enemy took that and persuaded me that I wasn't saved. Hmm. How many of you have ever been told, well, you didn't really get it? Amen. You didn't really get it. And those of you that received the Holy Ghost, as soon as you begin to speak in tongues, oh, that ain't it. Come on. Preach, preach. You better hush. That ain't it. Come on. Hallelujah. The enemy is a great persuader. <laughs> With his deception, he can persuade you, Ernie, if we're not real careful. 
That's the reason why in the scriptures it says that the very elect. Yeah, come on. <laughs> the very elect, their hearts could be changed, if not real careful. So the more time that we spend with Christ, the more time that we spend in prayer or in His Word, we're spending time with Him, we're having fellowship with Him. Whenever I'm praying, I'm fellowshipping with Him. Whenever I'm reading, I'm fellowshipping with Him. Whenever I'm praying, I'm talking to Him. And whenever I'm reading, I'm letting Him talk to me. Sometimes in my prayer, whenever I stop and just sit silent, I'm waiting for God to minister to me. You see, I'm a minister, but I also need to be ministered to. You're a minister, but you also need to be ministered to. And you're a minister, but you also need to be ministered to. Same thing, Rob, we're men. All preachers, all song leaders, all Sunday school teachers, all those that lead in, in some kind of leader position need to be ministered to. Amen. <coughs> so sometimes when I'm praying... I take my needs or my request boldly to God. And then after I do that, I become silent. Whether I stay on my knees and become silent or I sit up and become silent, I sit and I wait for some time to maybe lay in the floor and wait upon the Lord to speak. Especially if I'm praying, if I'm taking something before God that I am in need of or I'm looking for something or an answer for something and I pray to God for an answer then how can God answer me if I don't sit? Come on. Amen. 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 If I don't get quiet before Him after I tell Him what I need an answer for Come on. you ever been on the phone with some people and, you, and you're trying to give them something and they won't hush quick enough or long enough for you to get a word in anybody? Yeah. Them bill collectors are good for that. They'll, they'll call you now and then. They'll hammer you for a while and won't even give you a chance to reply. Sometimes we're that way with God. We, we get in and we hammer God and tell Him what we have need of, but we don't want to sit and wait and let Him tell us how He's going to fix it. Hallelujah. I told you all this morning, I'm excited. I'm trying to stay away from it at this point. I'm trying to stay on my God's got for us here this morning. But I'm excited because God ignited something in my spirit and He showed me something. And I got to stay away from the Lord. Help me to, to stay on track with this this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It excited me so much that I once wasn't good enough, I went back for a second dose. Hallelujah. If you ever, if you ever got a hold of something that and you tasted of it, and it tasted so good that, man, I just can't quit with it. I've got to have more. Hallelujah. And you keep going, and you keep indulging in it, and you keep going back after more until you find yourself on the borderline of gluttony. <laughs> but Jim, man, I eat better. You know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whenever I find something and God opens and reveals something, whenever He gives me a revelation, it excites me. Hallelujah. And it causes me to want more of it. Amen. But this right here, the more of this we get, the more tribulation we can stand. Glory to God. The more of all these things that I've already read. Now let me go just a little bit farther. It says, I, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. None of those 17 things that I just read to you, if we get wrapped up in Christ, get our hearts fixed, none of those 17 things will deter us. None of those 17 things will turn us around. Matter of fact, those 17 things will cause us to increase in Him. Once we get our heart fixed, those 17 things, whenever they begin to come to pass in our life, it's going to cause us to go to Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to cause us to go to Him because we know in Him we have strength. Man. You see, whenever we come together as a body here on Sunday morning, we draw strength from one another. 
Some Sunday mornings I come into the sanctuary and I come in, even whenever I step into the pulpit, I am weak in body, but I begin to draw strength from my brothers and sisters and then my help comes from heaven. Yes. God opens up the windows of heaven and pours me out a blessing. Amen. And I begin to feel something begin to ignite inside me and that weakness, that, that pitifulness that I felt upon me, that sickness that I might have felt upon me begins to move away from me. Yes. Man. But sometimes I refuse to let God help me and I hand it off to somebody else. Come on. Mm. But if my heart's fixed, uh -huh. if my heart is truly fixed, the secret of victory and absolute assurance for the believer is to walk as taught in Romans 8 and 1. There is for no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now I just gave you 17 things that Paul says will not cause him, or hinder him, or stop him from loving Christ. He's even persuaded that they will not do this. Well, if our heart is fixed in that manner, then we find 17 more things Paul said, for I am persuaded, Paul explains that in view of his doctrines before stated, the 17 things that I just gave you, and his doctrine, he is personally persuaded that nothing will be able to separate him from the love of he has for God and Christ. Anything or any more than he would be moved to commit Any more than he would be moved to commit the 17 works of the flesh. See, if our heart's not fixed, that's why billboards cause a thought to come. That's it, Lord. Amen. If our heart's not really fixed, that's why an older causes her mind to begin to want something. I can smell a jalapeno when I want it. <laughs> Not that that's bad, but that's just an example. I can smell it and I want it. Go to Galatians chapter 5. If those seven thing things that Paul just gave us cannot separate us from the love of Christ, then surely we've got our heart fixed and we don't have to worry about these 17 lusts of the flesh or works of the flesh. Galatians 5 and 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are these. There are 17 of them. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, idolatry witchcraft, hatred, hatred various emulation, emulations, wrath, strife, seduc seductions, or addictions, seductions, seditions. Get it right, man. Praise the Lord. Thanks for help. Heresies, envy, murders, Drunk. drunkenness, reveling, and such like, and such like of the of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you, time my glasses, past. in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If my heart's fixed, I'm not going to mess with him. Come on, amen. Even if the enemy manages to get into my mind and place a thought in my mind, if my heart's fixed, I'm still not going to do those things. I'm going to do what? I'm going to cast that thought down. And once I get it cast down, then I can tread it on it. But as long as it's up here, I can't walk on it. But when I cast it down, and what, what do you mean by cast? Whenever I say no, devil, my heart is fixed on God. I got saved May 15th, 1993, and I've grown stronger every day since. And no, devil, I am not receiving this thought. I am not accepting this thought. This thought will not hinder me. This thought will not commit me, cause me to commit sin. This thought I cast down now in the name of Jesus, and I walk up on him.
my strength that I need to stay away from these things comes from the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. If my memory serves me correctly, I preached a message right here in this church. Why do we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And I gave us some reasons. Right here are some of the reasons. Amen. Do Christians, there's more. There's more than just salvation. Amen. There is a baptism. Yes. I'm not talking about water baptism. I'm talking about a baptism in the Spirit. Amen. Water baptism, yes. We're going to do that here too much longer. We've got some candidates that's ready to be water baptized. But I'm praying, as I pray over this church and I pray over each and every one of you, whenever I get down on my knees and I begin to call your name out before God, I'm saying, Lord, saturate us. Bring us into the place where we are so saturated in you and so wrapped up in you and so baptized in your spirit that nothing that the enemy comes at us with will hinder us or cause us to even think of committing one of those 17 works of the flesh. Amen. When I got up from the altar, May 15, 1993, I knew that I was changed. I knew that I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. The way I felt, I knew. But it wasn't long before the enemy came and said, oh, you didn't. You didn't really get it. But I was smart enough to realize because I had been there before and I stepped away from God before. God didn't step away from me. I walked away from God. Amen. I chose to go back to my old type of life. I gave up on God. God never gave up on me. Thank God he never gave up on me. Even when I was drinking, he never gave up on me. Even when I was going places I wasn't supposed to be going, and Mama was praying for me, and Daddy was praying for me, Grandpa and Grandpa was praying for me, church members was praying for me, God never gave up on me. Amen. Even in some of those places that I went, God managed to show up somewhere in my conscience or in my surroundings to let me know that He was still dealing with me and still working with me and still wanted me to come back and fulfill what Come on. What my destiny was yes. in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, there is no condemnation. First of all, don't get mixed up with conviction and condemnation. Amen. Conviction comes from God. Okay? Condemnation comes from the devil. The night that God began to deal with me, I thought my heart was going to burst. I thought I'd have a heart attack. God was dealing with me so strong that night. You see, God had waited. God had never gave up on me. And God finally got me in the place to where I actually sat down and listened to somebody minister to me for a little while. And then the conviction fell upon me so strong that I thought my heart was going to burst. He dealt with me so strong that night that I thought this to myself, Bert, if you don't go pray, you're going to die. This is it, buddy. And now this was me talking to me. This is it, buddy. If you don't do it tonight, it's over for you. That's what I felt. The conviction was so strong on me, Rob, that's what I felt. If I didn't repent that night, that day of my backslide and all my sin, it was over for me. 
And that's one thing that helped me to give my heart to the, to the Lord and receive the new heart that He offered me is because I knew that this was my last change. If you'll get it in your spirit that this might be your last change or this will be your last change, you see, I thought to myself, if I don't go pray tonight and I don't repent tonight, I'm a dead man. Amen. And the longer I sit there and the longer I let God deal with me, the more that I wanted to pray. But there was another part of me that wanted to get up and exit that building to quit. Wanted me to get out of there. The enemy wants you to get out from under the power of God. The enemy wants to take you away from the anointing of God. The enemy wants to take you outside and away from God's protection so he can destroy you. Amen. But I made my mind up that night. Before I even got up off of my pew and come to the altar, I made up my mind that night, God, if you'll forgive me, I won't go back no more. And everything I give up that had rule over me, and things had rule over me, church, and everything that I gave up that had rule over me, I knew that if I ever picked those things up again, they would be sin. That's why that whenever I see a billboard, it may put a thought in my mind, but I've got sense enough to block it right then and to cast it down. Amen. Even if I'm on the internet and I'm surfing the web Come on. and something pops up and it puts a thought in my mind, I automatically don't detain it. Amen. Don't, don't entertain that thing. Come on. Cast it down, put it away from you. Glory to God. Cast it down and put it under your feet and begin to tread upon that in the name of Jesus. Yes. If you have to stop right then and there and say, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command this spirit that's trying to enter back into me to flee from me right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And cast it down. Amen. Amen. Now, one time, Rob, I've never went to him. And he turned a deaf ear to me. There's times I have gone to him with questions and I found silence, but I never found a deaf ear. There's a difference between silence and a deaf ear. Sometimes I think that the time that I heard silence or I felt silence and didn't hear a reply was, that was time whenever God was just to show me how much I really needed what I was asking for. If I go to him with a question or if I've got a concern about this body and I go to him with a question concerning this body, God, something's operating in her body and I don't, I don't understand it. I don't really know what's going on and I ask you, Lord, to reveal to me and to show me what's going on in this body. Then he will reveal it to me. Maybe not that prayer. It may be 10 prayers. It may be even 20 prayers. It may be the prayer where I'm just about ready to give up and God answer me and show me the answer to my question. So when we come to Christ, after May 15, 1993, Larry got changed. Larry got saved, but Larry needed more. You have no idea what God's got planned for your life. Amen. But I'll guarantee you the devil knows what God's got planned for your life. That's why he fit me so hard. I mean, that's why he tried to destroy me the way that he tried to destroy me because he knew if that ever gets back with God, if God ever gets a hold of him again, his mind and his heart's going to be set upon God and God's going to begin to use him for his glory. Not Larry's glory, but God's going to use him for his glory. He's going to preach what God gives him to preach. He will speak things that no other will speak. Why? Because he is ordained of God to do that. So 
Well, after I got saved, when I got up, I knew it. I knew I was changed. I knew I accepted Christ. I knew Christ coming, and I was praising Him for forgiving me. Because honestly, at home, I would say it, and I'd think, Lord, I went too far. I've done too many bad things. I've sinned too long. I've sinned away my day of grace. I would think these things. Sitting at home drinking, I would think these things. Those thoughts come from the enemy. The enemy wanted to persuade me that there was no use in me going to God because God wasn't going to hear me. God heard me. God heard you. God answered you. Now God desires to do more with you. Amen. You see, I wasn't a stranger to this. I was brought up in a Pentecostal home. I was brought up around people that talked in tongues and laid hands on the sick and saw them recover. I was brought up around people that run the pews and, and run around the church and shouted and give glory to God. I was brought up around that. So I wasn't no stranger to the Holy Ghost. I had never been baptized in it, but I wasn't no stranger. Good. Before I get into this part of this message, I want to tell you something right now. Whenever you are born, God gives each and every one of us a measure of faith. Amen. Whenever I took my first breath, there was a measure of faith already in me. And that measure of faith for I was put there for a purpose for when the time came for me to believe upon it. The only begotten Son of God. Amen. That's what it was put there for. Because without faith, we can't be saved. Amen. Without faith, we can't be changed. Amen. And once we're saved, without the spiritual faith, we can't walk on these things. Amen. Without spiritual faith, we, these things that, that Paul spoke of first will cause us, if we're not real careful, to get away from God. But once we receive spiritual faith and we begin to believe upon Christ, then we know that tribulation, and the way that we know these things is we read the Word of God. Amen. Amen. We find it in Scripture that tribulation bringeth patience, work of patience. So I know if I begin to get into tribulation, all I need to do is just to seek God until I get through it. Keep seeking God until I get through it. You get up right now to leave this church. You don't. Get, you're not out of this church until you go out that door. Yeah. If you never make it to the door, you don't get out of the church. So I knew the night that God changed me that I had to sell out because this was it. Was Couldn't hold on to anything. I had to give it all up because this was it. Amen. I knew. Nobody prophesied to me and told me. I knew in my spirit. I knew. All right, this is it. God has waited on you so long. This is it. So I begin to pour my heart out. I begin to surrender all of it. I laid it all on the altar. There were some things that still clung to me, that hung on to me, that I had to deal with in my walk with Christ, and the Lord had to deal with me, and we got rid of those things in my life. Everything didn't fall off me that night right here at the altar. When I got up, there were some things still following me. I shook them off, but they got up and they followed me. Thoughts from my past, they followed me. Things that I had done when I was a sinner, they followed me. And the enemy made sure that they followed me because he picked them up and come after me with them. He wanted me back. He didn't want me to preach. He didn't want me to sell out to God. He didn't want me to get my heart fixed. He wanted to come after me with all those things that I left at the altar trying to put them back. That's something that they do break every chain. Yeah. Glory to God. When they hang another thing around one of those children's neck, addiction, that's a, something that the enemy puts on you and he wants you to have it back. If you lay it down, he wants to give it back. Come on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, God. 
So there now, therefore now is no condemnation. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Even in my prayer time, the enemy tries to enter. While I'm praying, brother, he wants in there. Amen. He wants to block. You see, the Bible talks about principalities. The scripture that I just read talks about a principality. Amen. But whenever we pray, we have to go through principalities in the air. Evil principalities. There are things that can block our, there's evil principalities in the airwaves above us and we got to go through them to get to God. I'm going through all this to get to somewhere. Hope I don't lose you. The night that you came to Christ or the day that you came to Christ, whether it was at an altar or whether it was in your car or whether it was in your home, you felt the convicting spirit upon you and you, then you went and you prayed to God. Those things were blocked away from you. There was no principality that was separating you. Whenever you accepted that call upon your heart, upon your soul, and you come and you begin to call out to Christ, He removed all that things so you could get through to Him. So He could change you. But then after we start our Christian walk, the enemy, like I said, He picks up those things and He comes after us. He picked up the spirit of alcoholism and he came after me. He picked up the spirit of pornography and he came after me. He picked up the spirit of sexual perversion and he came after me. The spirit of adultery and he came after me with it. Just as he's doing with each and every one of you that accepted Christ as your Savior, he's still after you. Amen. I don't care if you've been saved for 50 years. Come on. He's still after you. Amen. God never gave up on me. And the devil won't give up trying to get you back. Amen. So you better get your heart fixed. Yes. You better get wrapped up in Jesus. Amen. You better find all the scriptures that you can find to embroider yourself in. Use the word of embroider. Embroider yourself in that to wrap yourself up in it and sink yourself down in. So whenever you come into the place to where that you need to call upon God, you can use one of those scriptures. Yes. Amen. God, you told me to fear thou not, for yes. you was with me. Amen. Fear is one of the things we're going to talk about in that special service. Elijah had a great anointing. But even in Elijah's great anointing, fear overtook him. And I'm on the borderline here again. <laughs> My pastor had a great moment. Before I should use the word hey, he's still alive. He's still dying. He's still good. <laughs> But I know with my pastor's life, there have been times of fear in his life. One time fear will show up in your life is whenever the doctor looks at you and tells you, there's nothing I can do to change that situation. That's in you right now. That thing's growing in you and I can't change it. And fear will come into you and he'll try to grip you and he'll try to steal your faith. Because we all know that Jesus is the great physician. Luke was a physician, but Jesus is the great physician. Bring it to Luke, wasn't it? Sometimes I check myself. Hallelujah. Jesus is a great physician. 
<clears throat> and in order for us to use that great position, we've got to use faith. Amen. And fear will interfere with faith. It will mess it up. But when fear comes in and grabs hold of you, it begins to wipe away all, it, it, all that and starts right then. Just like a virus in a computer. What is that one virus that goes in and eats you and begins to eat your file up like a worm or something? It's like that virus. Once it gets into you, it begins to eat at your faith. It begins to try to wipe your faith away. If it can get your faith wiped away, it knows that cancer is going to kill you. If it can get your faith wiped away where you've got no faith in God to trust in Him, then diabetes is going to wipe you out. If you get rid of my faith, then that atrial field or heart problem will wipe me out. I don't plan on dying of a heart attack. I don't plan on dying with cancer. I don't plan on dying with sugar diabetes. I would like to go while I'm preaching. I'd like to go while the anointing is on me. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Just go sit down somewhere and just go to sleep in Jesus or just fall while I'm preaching and go to be with Jesus or let the rapture take place and nothing be left but my clothes laying on the floor. Satan, I bind this attack right now in the name of Jesus. This is an attack to keep him from hearing the word of God. I come against it. I bind it right now in Jesus' name. I spoke the anointing of the priest. I spoke the anointing of the prophet. I spoke the anointing of the king over this service. And I bind this attack right now. Satan, you are a liar. In the name of Jesus, you are a liar. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Accept your victory, Dad. Accept your victory in the name of Jesus. Devil, you are a liar. Glory to God. You are a liar, devil. Hallelujah. He has more strength than you say he does. He is stronger than you say he is. In the blood of Christ, he is stronger. This is a man of God that the anointing rests upon. He is stronger than you are. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Receive it, Dad. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Accept it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. That's a trick of the devil. Yes, glory. That's a trick of the devil. Hallelujah. That's a trick of the devil. And we've all walked into it. We've all stepped into it. I have stepped into it. I have walked into it so strong early that I was ready to just give up everything and walk away. It's a trick of the enemy. But greater is he that is in me, yes. greater is he that is in you, yes. that is in this world. Greater is he that is in you, Dad, than he that is in this world. Yes. Speak it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Glory to God. I have victory over this in the name of Jesus. I have victory over this because yes. of the blood of Christ has yes. been applied to my life. I have victory over this because of my faith. My faith tells me by his stripes I am healed. Glory to God. Church, if I ever get down like that, y'all get right in my face. You get right in my face and you begin to rebuke that spirit of infirmity. We begin to rebuke that spirit of confusion that's trying to wipe away my faith. Hallelujah. I've heard that man preach like a running sawmill. Amen. Going through timbers. I could just about hear the timbers falling around him. The anointing of God that was on him when he could preach. And the man couldn't read. Amen. He couldn't read. But he had something more precious. In the ability to read. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Upon him was the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. 
that knew every word, Hallelujah. every passage of that scripture. Hallelujah. I've heard him quote it. Uh, yeah, we bought him. We bought him records back then. There was no such thing as CDs. Back then, they were records and cassettes, and we bought him those things. Bible on record, Bible on cassette. He would listen. But I've heard him on the anointing and the power of God. And that anointing's still on you, Dad. Yes. Amen. That anointing's still on you. That anointing's not left you. God's not lifted that from you. You still have that. You still have that authority in the blood of Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you do. You were here today for a purpose. Divine appointment. Each and every one of you is here today. Divine appointed to be here. Glory to God. You're not here by accident. You say, well, I wanted to come. Yeah, you wanted to come because God brought you here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 There's something greater than he that is in this world. There's something greater than the devil, the principalities that's in the airways above us. There's something greater that'll take us through those. There's something greater that'll take us to the place where God can hear us. And my God can use me. Amen. Through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we have the authority to walk over every principality. I'm going to start speaking it over every service. I'm going to start speaking the anointing of the prophet. I'm going to start speaking the anointing of the priest. That kingly anointing over every service. Why are you doing that? Because Jesus is the king. Yeah. He's the priest. He's the prophet. Yeah. He's the prophet of all prophets. Yeah. He's the priest of all priests. He's the king of all kings. Jesus yeah. is the one. Glory to God. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. He is the one. Yeah. Yes, God. He is the one. Hallelujah. Nobody else died for me. Jesus died for me. Nobody else bore stripes for me, but Jesus bore stripes for me. He is the one. Hallelujah. 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 He is the one. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust of the flesh lusts us against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh is a battle. Come on. The spiritual warfare that's going on inside of each and every one of us today. If you're Christians, there's a warfare that's going on inside you. Come on. The flesh is battling against the spirit. The flesh, that old man that was crucified, wants to be resurrected. He wants to come alive again come so he can mess you up. Yeah, come on. Preach, preach. Come on. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We can never want walk in that kingly anointing. Amen. Come on. We can walk in the priestly anointing. Yes. Hallelujah. We can walk in that prophetic anointing. Amen. Jesus said in Scripture, these things that I do, <laughs> he went a little bit farther than just saying you can do what I've done. He said greater things. There you go. Shall you do? He didn't say can you do. He said shall you do? Shall you do? Why? Because I go to the Father, and if I go to the Father, I'm praying that the Father will send you back a Comforter, something that'll be in you and above you and around you that will keep you. Hallelujah! Glory! There you go, preacher. Yeah. There you go, preacher. Yeah, hallelujah. Let it manifest. My God, let it manifest itself in you. Glory to God. Let it come up out of you. From way down below, you feel free. Let it begin to roll up out of you. Glory to God. Let the power and the morning of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on. He paid the price so we could be saved. Yeah. 
for us, for us to have that great anointing, be able to walk it out, then we got to pay a price. Amen. Ernie, he paid the awesome price for your salvation. But you had to pay a price to, to get whatever you needed on top of that. Yeah. Lord God, it was my responsibility yeah. to take what he gave me. It was my responsibility to take that measure of faith. It was my responsibility to take that measure of the spirit that he gave me and cause it to increase and to grow in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My responsibility. Yeah. yeah, whenever I get weak, I got brothers and sisters that'll come to me. Just like you got brothers around dad back there right now. Amen. Praying with you. That's right, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But there is a place we can get in and how long to be there. Hallelujah. These used to hinder me in the service. But I've got to the point nothing hinders me no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. I sell out to Jesus and I say, Lord, this is in your hand. Whenever I speak that anointing of the king, of the prophet, of the priest over a service, then I step into that. There ain't nothing can hinder that. There ain't nothing can enter into that. Nothing can stop me from delivering what God gave me to deliver. Nothing can Lily, did you know your boyfriend was a madman? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> He's a madman. Glory. He's mad for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. That's the reason that whenever I got saved, I knew there was something more. My pastor was one of those men that would preach it to me. Amen. He didn't call my name, but he would preach it. He said, there's something more than what you got. Uh, come on. There's something more than you can have it. Oh, yeah. He said he got hit in the basement of a church. <laughs> Woo! He said, there's something more, and you can have it. Uh, I've seen him pack him out. Put him in his car and send him home. Him drunk in the spirit, uh, talking in tongues. Uh, glory to God, couldn't walk uh, because of the spirit was so saturated within him. Uh, he couldn't even move. Yeah. I'm guilty of it too. Let things hinder. There been times that I didn't have nobody to pass it off on. There been times there was no other preacher in the building. The enemy would attack me. And I had to pray under my breath, God come to me and help me. Because I'm about to go down. Then I'd hear this small, still voice speak within me. As long as the master's on board, how can the ship go down? How can the ship go down? As long as I'm on board with you, there's no going down. There's no giving up. There's no backing down. Except what I tell you and walk up on it. Walk in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we walk into Brother Will's room before we get to the door, I hear somebody praying. Hallelujah. Bless my brother Lord. Glory. I hear somebody praying. Yeah, devil, now look what you are. Glory. Look what you awoke in, devil. Glory. You caused something to be awakened in something you thought was dead, something you thought was calloused over. They've been something that's awakened.
get it saturated in our Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in him than he that is in this world. Greater is he that is in you, Brother Herman, than he that is in this world. Greater is he that is in you, Scott, than he that is in this world. Sometimes we walk in the road with room. Hallelujah. He's praying. Sometimes when we walk out, he's praying. He never fails to say, don't forget me. Yes, don't forget me. Hallelujah. Pray for me. Don't forget me. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Hallelujah. 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 I praise you for a dad that wasn't afraid to stand in the face of the enemy. I thank you, God, for an earthly father that wasn't afraid to stand in the face of the enemy and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and to lay his hands upon his children and to claim his children for the glory of God. I thank you, God, for a father. Oh, hallelujah, that was so saturated with the anointing and the power of God that he would not lay down and give up. He claimed his children in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Love you, Dad. Hallelujah. 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 Speak to arthritis in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Not only in my dad's body, but in my body, God, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here's our front row, Dad, where you can get it all. Hallelujah. 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 Front row where you can get it all. Brother Junior, sit with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We are all gathered together in the upper room. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. 120 of them. The Bible said about 120. Me and them women. Hallelujah. Gathered together up there. Guess what the prophets, honey? Yes. Glory. There were some hungry people up there. There were some hungry people gathered together up there. Amen. Glory to God. Because Jesus told them, I'll go away. And if I go away, I'll send you back a comforter. He said, go ye and tarry until he comes. Amen. They were gathered together in that upper room. Um, day of Pentecost. Yes. Something happened on the day of Pentecost. Yes. Thank you. Something fell upon each and every one of them. They endured power from on high. The Spirit of God was poured out upon each of them. As it said in the book of Acts, and as the Spirit gave them utterance, they began to speak with other tongues. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of them thought, well, they're drunk. Come on. Come on. Preach, preach. Them men and them women are drunk. But they began to speak in tongues. They were all different nationalities up there. They were different languages up there in that upper room, and they all began to speak in a language where each one could. My God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. That barrier of separation <laughs> was lifted. Hallelujah. They began to speak with new tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. But there's too many today trying to speak in them tongues as not the Spirit giving the utterance. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Glory. But it's up for each and every one of us to get our flesh step in the place to where we'll know that tongue. Amen. Amen. Go to the living room entirely, he said. And my father will send you back a comfort.
be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. For the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself. Bless him, For me. Hallelujah. I am crucified with Christ. I accepted the crucifixion. When I repented of my sin, then when they placed me down in the water, they buried me with it. Right. When they raised me up out of the water, they resurrected me with it. Amen. Lord, to God, a newness of life. But my sins had already been forgiven at the altar. He came and forgave me of my sins. Thank you, Those of you that have not seen a miracle in a while, you just saw one this morning. Amen. I ain't seen God move in a long time. You just saw it this morning. Amen. You want to preach about an hour? I'll back you. I'll scotch you. You saw God move this morning. Responsibilities whenever I accepted the call of my life. Even though there have been times in that calling that I've said, Lord, you surely made a mistake. You surely made a mistake. Romans 8 and 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Elisha received a double portion of what Elijah had. Go <coughs> to dead man in his grave. Dead man fell down on Elisha's bones. You know he was still so strong that he come back alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to stay dead. God's looking for some Elijahs. Amen. Come on. Some Elishas. Uh -huh. Amen. Some Jehu. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to stay away from it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm excited. Hallelujah. God does let me know Jesus. that if we'll obey him and do what he asks us to do, if the things will take place here, enough people go on. I thought that church had died. Come on, amen. Oh, man. Man. Hallelujah. Oh. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I say it again. How can the ship go down when the master's on board? Yeah. Amen. on board, honey, this ship ain't going down. This ship ain't tipping over. As long as Jesus is on board, this ship will sail, and he'll do that when it is sent to do. Amen. Come on, friend. Go 
little skeptics that drive by on Sunday morning and they look in the parking lot, ain't real full, and they say, see, I told you, it's going down, it's going down, I told you. Now, <laughs> not what I feel inside me, it ain't going down. Not what I feel rolling up inside me, it ain't going down. Not what I feel rolling up, it ain't going down. It's going to be resurrected in a new life, in a new power, in a new anointing. Amen. I desire the king we anoint. I desire the priest we anoint. I desire the prophetic anointing. I desire the anointing of Elijah. That anointing of Hazel. That anointing of Jehu. I desire that anointing. Glory to God of Elisha.
I looked right at him. I said, well, I ain't touching the volume on it. I said, because I like it the way it is. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Little Pierce. Yeah. Come on. The Word of God is powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword. It cuts going and. The two edged sword. Cuts on both sides. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing <laughs> destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. You just don't wind up and throw it over to the side. It destroys it. You got a yoke on you this morning? But God, I want to destroy it on the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Destroy this yoke that has hold on me. Get her together. About 120. Verse 5 said, And there were dwelling among at Jerusalem devout men. Or devout men. Devout men. I'll get it right in a minute. Out of every nation under heaven. Out of every nation. <coughs> And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak the Galileans? <laughs> but all the other nationalities, he said there in verse 11, We do hear them speak in our, in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Then others began to mock. They began to mock us, Rob. These men are drunk. They've been drinking new wine. They're full of new wine. They're drunk. They're full of new wine, all right. Hallelujah! <laughs> they're drunk and it shall come to pass verse 17 in the last day saith God I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall see visions and your young or your old men shall see dreams or your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams <laughs> Someday I'll get a brand new set of eyeballs. Hallelujah. Man. I'll be my fours. Hallelujah. The doctor said you got to have bipoles. You can't read without the bipoles. I can't read with them. <laughs> I gotta pull them out. But if I pull them out, I can't see back far. That's a good thing sometimes. Let me come get us a song, my brother. I'll work this up some. We take in and begin to mock them. But Peter in verse 14 said, But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be ye known unto be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For this these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it be but the third hour of the day, about nine a.m. in the morning. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Those on the flesh shall take up serpents, and 
to drink any deadly thing, and she'll not hurt him. I ain't said nothing against them rattlesnake handlers. They won't handle them, that's their business. Y'all bring one in here, I'll kill it. <laughs> If I pick it up, it'll surely be God. <laughs> you can bank on that. Spoke about fear. I don't know that I'm afraid of them, but I sure do respect them. I know to stay away from them. And I believe that scripture tells us that if we're do get bitten. We ask somebody try to poison us. Oh, I feel that coming back to me. Bless you, Lord. God, God, God. Hallelujah. And it ain't even been our gift. <laughs> it ain't even been uploaded yet. Like I said, if you want to handle them, that's your business. But I believe the land hands on the sick. Amen. And I believe they, will, they shall recover. Amen. You see him get up from there and walk up here. Amen. It's the word. Amen. My grandfather used to handle Them little boys would go outside to find one and make it mad, and then they didn't have no air conditioners. They had the windows up. They'd throw them into those church on him. They said, you just pick them up. They'd go limp. They'd lay it on the Bible stand and preach right on them. If I do it, brother, you'd be able to say, God, don't do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if God ain't on me, I'll be like Wendy Bagwell. <laughs> <laughs> or they won't let them. Or do you want me to make you a <laughs> All joking aside, church, there's more for us. Yeah, absolutely. And we find it at the same place we found the other. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's more water in that same field. Yes. It don't go dry. Hallelujah. I've been drawn for over three years. Since May 15th, 1993, I've been pulling from that whale, and there's still more in that whale for like hot. And if we open the altar today, come and draw some more out of that water, that well of salvation. Come and sink your bucket. I preached a message one time the other day. Drop your bucket into the well. And draw another bucket out of the well of salvation. There's power in that well. There's anointing in that whip. Come on, get some more of it as he sings. <laughs>